Mels, let's talk a little bit about sedan grass or sorghums and uh, that some people are using that as an alternative forage is a possibility. How do nitrates work in that one? Well, all of the sorghum family, whether it's sorghum sedan, sedan grass, whatever, even the millets, okay, will accumulate nitrates. Um, and so you need to take the same precautions that we're we've just talked about here with corn in terms of, you know, chop what you need, start the cattle slow. If you're making hay, make sure that you test it before you start, okay, to know where you're at because it's not going to dissipate from that. And, and, if, and if you have the option, I really like the corn silage route because it does have the potential of taking 40 to 60 percent nitrogen out, or the nitrate out. I would point out, though, one thing. If you're going to make silage, make sure that you make it in the right moisture range. And it needs to be somewhere between 30 percent dry matter and about 45 percent dry matter. That's kind of where you're going to optimize fermentation. If I make it too wet, in other words, I've got 80% or more water in this product, or actually more than 70% water in this product, I will get a sour fermentation, what we call a butyric acid fermentation, instead of a lactic acid fermentation. And so I will get a sour fermentation. That sets the stage for clostridia and listeria. All right, And so those are health problems that we just don't want to go down that road. So you've got to make sure that you don't make it too wet. And even though these plants look like they're rolled and that they're dry, you know, you'll be amazed at how much moisture is still left in that stalk. Okay, one of the other things we want to talk about is that nitrate accumulation we're dealing with. Uh, it's in the lower part of the stalk. That's the, one of the worst parts for it. So we want to cut it on the high side when we do these things. Well, and if you're making corn silage and you've got adequate acres, uh, the recommendation would be to set the cutter bar about eight inches high and go. All right, you're going to harvest more acres, but you're going to harvest a safer product. The challenge comes whenever you talk about hay. You know, if I've got an eight or a 12 inch stubble and I'm trying to pick up a windrow of something that's not going to feed very well through the through the pickup, that becomes a problem. All right, and so it becomes even more of an issue whenever you're making hay that that you really know what you're starting with and test that. There are several labs across the state. Uh, that are available to be able to do that diagnostic test, and that's sure what I'd recommend. If I had a small herd, I could come out here and actually hand cut some of this. Again, I'd want to cut it on the high side, though, and I want to make sure that that uh, I've not got that lower stalk down there. You know, and if if you're hand cutting, chances are you're going to hand cut smaller quantities than you would deliver maybe to a feed bunk, and so you know, again, starting slow, you know, with you know half a dozen stalks today and, and increase that over time. And of course, you know, when I was a kid, we used to cut stalks that way. Yeah. It's still an option. Uh, it's just, uh, you don't have all the silage equipment, some of us, but some people do have 20 cows, herds, and that's one of the options they can get into. Oh, uh, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about uh, sorghums and sedan. How about some oats? You know, later on this year, we could probably plant some oats out here. It too could run into nitrate problems, couldn't it? It could. Uh, now they don't accumulate quite as bad as the corns and the, and the sorghums, but they, they are a nitrate accumulator. And kind of what our rule of thumb is, is that if you can get oats in by about the middle of August, if we happen to get some rains and we got enough moisture to get germination, um, you know, spring oats seeded in, in mid-August is, is really not a bad feed. You'll probably get two tons if we, if we get some timely rains during its growing season. Uh, and the thing that I like about oats is that when you plant it this late in the year, uh, you won't get a seed hit. And so, you know, its quality will, lay, will, will be sustained longer into the fall. So I can use it either as a grazing crop or I can use it as a, uh, as a hay crop. One other comment that I want to make on, let's go back to the silage for just a second. And that is, is if you're a small producer, okay, I think the best option of making silage is probably in an ag bag. And the reason why I say that is, is that you've got an eight foot diameter bag and if you've got a small herd and you're, you're only taking that back a foot a day, I can keep the face fresh. If I make a pile, it's going to be real hard using small quantities to be able to keep that, that pile of silage fresh over a period of time and then you're going to get spoilage and you're not going to be happy with the results. Go. I got an option here that most people might think about and that is what about just putting a wire around this field, running some cattle out here and having them graze it? Well, again, nitrates can sure be an issue. The, the thing that's nice about in a grazing scenario that if I do have nitrates accumulated in the bottom third of the plant, 
And if I don't overgraze it and don't graze it real, real hard, what the cows will selectively graze were going to be the leaves and the shucks. And so it's, it's less nitrate, okay, up towards the top of that plant than it is at the bottom of the plant. So if I don't overgraze it, okay, and I don't force the cows to eat a lot of the bottom of the stalk, it's probably safer than maybe making hay even. Turn them in with a full belly, I'm sure of that. Oh, you bet. I mean, any time that you're, you're again, the, this transition is, is an operative word here. You know, make sure that the cows are full. What I would do is I'd probably turn them in for maybe an hour, okay? Pull them back out, okay? Again, fill them back up with hay. Tomorrow, I'd probably maybe move to two hours, okay? Kick them back out, you know, fill them back up. And again, transition that rumen so that it's able to handle those higher nitrate levels. What about later on? Maybe I'll just wait this corn off a little bit and wait to maybe uh, sometime in September once it starts drying up a little bit. What are our potential then? Well, and, and again, it, it, it's going to be purely di dictated by what this plant does and how much rain we get between now and then. You know, if this plant dies, right, you know, I mean, if it continues to, to deteriorate just like it is, has done in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, you still could have some pretty high levels of nitrates even in the drier feet, okay, because it's not going to dissipate. The plant has got to start metabolism again, all right, before that those nitrates are going to be utilized as plant protein. So I, I can't tell you right now what the risk factor is going to be for, you know, some of the standing corn harvested, you know, in September or October because it's going to depend a lot on what happens moisture-wise and how these plants react to that moisture. Great opportunity, great feed. Just got to watch out what you're doing because there's some great potential for some problems along that line. Okay, well, thank you, Ron. I appreciate your opportunity to talk to you today. Ron Lemonager, Purdue University Beef Cattle Specialist, uh, talking about some of the different things we can do to feed our cattle and some of the things that you can do that might not be the right thing to do. Got to watch out for those nitrates in our, our feeds. This presentation was a production of the Animal Science Department at Purdue University.